free speech I was is a an right that we though. have in the United States of America. Correct. In the United I celebrate. States, you look crazy right now. Pardon? So you look second. crazy in the United States. And if you went to Iran or Iraq, you look crazy there as well. You so, hold on. Well, then the why are you wasting here? your time What's talking to a crazy man? Because you are just... It's just If I were to say, unless you can scientifically prove something to me, then I won't believe it. Then this is my faith. Yeah, that's But science faith. is based on a series of tests to try to prove something. It's not a final answer. But it's more than saying, well, since I don't understand, then obviously, you know, I just don't know. I have to faith in something. The statement, unless you can scientifically prove something, it's not true, is a philosophy. Is that a philosophy? <laughs> no, that would be a criticism. That's fact. I have another question. Earlier you were saying something about uh, morality as a general being a proof for um, God. I didn't quite understand that. What if it's just a function of society? If it's just a function of society, well, yeah, because then like you know, hundreds, well, no, no, hundreds of years ago, what was acceptable then is not necessarily acceptable now. Like in Rome, you could have slaughtered a good amount of people in a binare, depending on who it was. Now you can't really do that. You know what I mean? So we have now certain laws that dictate, you know, it's not good to kill that amount of people. <laughs> what up? That many people. You know what I mean? So I, just, I don't quite understand what you mean by a universal morality. I've never seen that to be true. I mean, like in a state of nature, right? If I was going after survival, I wouldn't have problems maybe killing a guy to feed my children. Now, in society where there's laws, that wouldn't be acceptable. You know that you have to treat your fellow human being a certain way so that society runs smoothly. So why is morality universal? Do you believe that if Nazi Germany would have won World War II? Everybody always brings up the Nazis. What, what is this? What did you just say? Yes. Man, okay, I was fine. trying to answer your question. I'm sorry. I apologize. Go. If Nazi Germany would have won World War II, would that mean that the Holocaust is good? What? Oh, no. That would never mean that. No. Okay, why is the Holocaust well, that has wrong? To do with that. Why is the Holocaust wrong? Because it's immoral. Okay. Who We're defines speaking, morality? We're also speaking in a time frame now where we have law that also defines that kind of thing. Where on earth do you get off saying that your particular laws of your culture are right and the Nazis are wrong? How on earth can you remain intact with your rational mind and say, my morality is right of my culture, but the Nazis' morality is wrong? Why? Because I assert that my morality is right and the Nazis are wrong. If there is no God, morality is created by the individual, by society, which means it's totally relative. But if there is a God, then it's possible that there are some moral absolutes. But if there's no God, morality is all relative. Now, can we agree on that or not? No. Okay. What is the basis of a moral absolute if there is no God? We don't know. It could have been an invisible hand process, like invented by an incredibly intelligent God who decided that we should develop a subjective process for ourselves. You can't prove God doesn't exist, but you can't prove he exists either. Yeah. Which is the same exact ground I think you're holding is that everything's relative. That man creates individually any everything that has ever been created on this planet has been a product of that which man has created. You can't you can't prove that a god made anything. Can you prove anything in life? You can't prove anything. Thank you. Do you does that mean you just arbitrarily make decisions or do you look for evidence? Well, you have to take what you're given on this planet. I mean everything you have around you, all the elements, all the forces that push you around. You make conclusions. I mean, I'm an, I'm an engineer, and what I do is I take what I know, and I can make things, I can make machines, and I can try to benefit that which I have, but I, nothing's absolute ever. Okay. So you got you base your decisions on evidence, not proof. Exactly. And the evidence is that God exists. What? what? Everything that has a beginning has a cause. The universe has a beginning, therefore the universe has a cause. Really? How do you yeah. know? How do, how do you know? You don't know, know either. The case Big Bang. Can't prove that. Really? The Big Bang shows us the universe is not eternal. It has a beginning. 
Yeah, about 15 billion years ago. The, the evidence from astronomy is... No, I, I agree that it didn't happen much. Well, then why are you arguing with me about it? Well, no, I'm not arguing with you about it. I mean, your stance is that everything's relative. Anything could happen, right? No. no. If there is no God, morality is relative. But if there is no you God, and morality is subjective. Second piece of evidence for God's existence is, you as an engineer know, that order and design does not come about by chance. Uh, evolution. Well, the obvious question is, is there a mind behind evolution, or is there no mind? Well, evolution states that things happen pseudo-randomly. I mean, how did, how, did, how did life spawn out of a rock nothing by chance? That's another third piece of evidence for God's existence. Life does not come about from non-life by chance. There are definitely logical systems where there is paraconsistency, where truth and falsity are mutually exclusive. Like what? <laughs> logical systems where that, that's the case, as opposed to instead of saw, uh, binary values where something is either false or true, that it can be true and false, or neither. Okay. When can A and non-A be equally true in the same way at the same time? Uh, if you write out the start sentence is true, and you start that sentence, it's both true and false, or neither true nor false. What? Do you not? All right. Uh, if I had some paper, I'd show you. This, if, if I wrote out on, on a chalkboard, say, the start sentence is false, and I start it, then it's the start sentence is false, but that makes the sentence true. But it's both true and false at the same time. Yes, it is. Uh -uh. What's the point you're trying to make? That your logical system, your whole example there of a professor saying something is true and false, being based on absolute, is not right. No, I put forward the law of non-contradiction. That A and non-A cannot both be true in the same no way at the same that that's, time. That's, Do you no disagree with that? It might be not. It might not be true. Well, I know that. I might be a bad dream you're having right now. Anything's possible. Well, so you throw but what does like the some... evidence point to? The evidence points to the law of non-contradiction being correct. The evidence points to you and me standing here having a conversation. And guess what you're using? The same thing I'm using. You're using speech and logic and reason to communicate with me. Exactly. And you're using that to try and define a system when there isn't a whole lot of evidence for it. There is no evidence for a God. Of course there's evidence that God exists. Order and design. Point to a designer. Well, what about in uh, evolution? How come that's not? What about it? How is that? Evolution not has nothing to do with what I just said. Yeah, you said order and design. All right, how about order and design in biology? And there, you take uh, theories like creationism and intelligent design, and those are all negative evidence theories where they have no positive uh, evidence for them, only small problems in evolution to back them up. Sure, evolution is just a process, so the question still remains, is there an intelligent mind behind the process, or is there no intelligent mind behind the process? You're right, but it's not necessity. The evolution doesn't necessitate an intelligent designer, so that's, once again, it, your, your evidence is poor, I would say. For, well, fine. If you believe the designer genes don't have a designer behind them, if you believe that a BMW can come together as a result of a cyclone passing through a metal scrap yard, well, if you pretty... believe that oxygen, which is 21% of our atmosphere, if it was 25%, fires would break out all over the place. If it was 15%, we'd all suffocate. If you think that that kind of complexity can come about by chance, Absolutely. I gotta tell you, I can't be so gullible. Because everything in my experience is, order and design and complexity of that nature demands an intelligent mind. So you're saying there's no chance ever? That there's no sure. chance for anything possible. It's possible well, I'm a like bad that. dream you're having, okay? But the evidence is I'm real. The evidence is you're real. That's why we're continuing this conversation. At least it's why I am. So I don't base my life on proof, but I base my life on evidence. And the evidence is, sir, you don't get complexity by chance. You don't get intelligent communication by chance. It demands an intelligent mind. The d amount of DNA in a single cell demands a creator. How can you have so much densely packed information 
without an intelligent mind. I feel like it's just someone who can't comprehend. Uh, That's chance. the argument from incredulity. Basically, you don't know how it could happen, so you say God must have done it. No, there was yes. an argument from experience. No, my that's, experience that's is right. if I'm walking down the beach and I see ripples in the sand, and you ask me, "Hey, dude, how'd the ripples get there?" and I say, "The waves did it." Experience. If we keep good... on walking down and we see John loves Mary written in the sand, and you say, "Hey, dude, how'd that get there?" and I say, "Because the waves made it." That's absurd. Why? Because John loves Mary is qualitatively different from ripples in the sand. I have seen life come from life. Never once have you or I seen life come from non-life. An atheist and agnostic is saying life can come from non-life. There is not one observation of that by anybody. But you still believe it. That's blind, gullible faith. Dude, sir. I can't have that much faith. Sir. I only see life come from life. I never see life come from non-life. His man has free will and is able to make decisions on his own. For instance, uh, I made a decision to talk to you right now. Right. Um, now, God is infallible without fault. He doesn't seem time as a, uh, you know, same conquest as us. It's like an open book for him. Right. He sees everything as one plane. So he already knows I'm going to make my decision to talk to you. Yep. So in reality, this is something that's already been planned out. God already knows which way I'm going, what I'm going to say to you, which way I'm going to turn. Yep. So in reality, man doesn't have free will because this is something that God already knows and understands to be planned. Good question. Correct? Very hard question. When we say that God is all-knowing, mm -hmm. we do not mean that God writes on a piece of paper what you and I are going to do tomorrow, locks it in a bank vault, and then you and I have to do what's on the paper tomorrow. Right. Instead, what we mean is, due to God's perspective outside of the dimension of time, God is eternal. God is not locked into the dimension of time right. the way you and I are. Right. He is in a position to see what you and I will freely choose tomorrow. Right, but, uh, but does, isn't that contradictory? Isn't that a circular logic? For instance, if God knows where I'm going to end up right now in 10 years, would you yep. agree that God knows right now where I'm going to be in 10 years? Right. He can see that. Right. Would you agree with that? Yep. Okay. So any decisions that I make up until that point to get me where I'm going to be in 10 years have already been knowledgeable to God because he could drop back and say from five years he's going to be in here, from five minutes he's going to be here, and one uh -huh. second he's going to be here. Right. So in reality, although we comprehend our own free will, this is something that's already understood by God. So if God really is infallible and without fault, then man doesn't have free will. God is omnipresent which means God can be in Storrs, Connecticut and Calcutta, India at the same time. Right. Why? Because God is outside of the dimension of space. <laughs> He's not limited by space. Right. Which means God does not have a torso, a head, two arms exactly. and two legs. Right. Yeah, I understand. Because he is outside of the dimension of space, God can be in Calcutta, India, London, England and Storrs, Connecticut at the same time. Right. Similarly, because God is outside of the dimension of time. God is eternal. God looks at all of history at a glance. Therefore, due to his perspective outside of time, God sees what you and I will freely choose to do tomorrow. But so he knows what we're going to do. Because he's outside right. yeah, I understand of the that, dimension saying, of time. Right, so, so there's a entity which we will call God. No, I'm not trying to put it into a human form. We'll call this entity God. So this godly form knows where we're going to be, like you said, in any time, in any place, in any space. So in reality, actions we make here are not free will, but they're actions that are already understood by God. He knows if I'm going to talk to you or if I'm not going to talk to you. And by knowing that, doesn't that take away man's free will altogether? No. If I watch a movie twice, I understand and if that, I but... see the actions in the second time, in the second time I watch the movie, and I know what he's going to do next, I knew what Dustin Hoffman or Tom Cruise or Liam Nielsen is going to do next. It doesn't mean that I'm forcing him to do it. Yeah, no, I'm not saying he's forcing you, John. I'm saying, but any, um, all I'm saying is that wouldn't any decision we make or any action we make on Earth already be known by God? Would you agree with that? Yes. Okay. So, although that we have the free will, as you would say, to make those decisions, aren't those decisions by already being known in reality not really free will? We're not making this decision of where we're going to go because this is already predestined to where we're going to end up. 
Okay. I can watch my little child reach out to touch a red hot stove. Yeah. I know that when that finger touches that red hot stove, it's going to recoil in pain. Mm -hmm. Just because I know that doesn't mean I am making the child touch the red hot stove and okay. get burned. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Just because I have knowledge that something's going to happen does not mean that I'm forcing it to happen. Okay. I understand what you're saying. What do you think about Christ? <laughs> I don't, I don't, no, I, I really I don't want to get into the whole thing. Um, to tell you the truth, I'm, uh, I think I just, like he said, you know, I follow a lot of uh, you know, basic uh, Christian Catholic values. Um, I think that I'm taking my own free will to kind of make different decisions. Um, I've read a lot of the Bible. Um, there are some things that I just couldn't comprehend uh, all powerful, loving God to um, <laughs> to think with some other people. You know, I, I believe that humans are all equal. I think that we all do have uh, you know flaws, obviously, like you said. But I think that uh, you know, with God, if there is a God, I believe there is, being uh, all loving nature, that uh, He wouldn't necessarily. Um, want us to, uh, you know, Leviticus 2013, have the blood of uh, a homosexual man spew from the, the land. I don't necessarily think that would be uh, a loving God's nature. Good. And so Jesus didn't do that, did he? Oh, I'm not saying he did. No, but right. Jesus is the son of God, and in reality, Jesus would be the equivalent of God. Uh -huh. if you have that. Good. So you believe that Jesus was God? I'm saying if he was, no, I'm saying. <laughs> Uh -huh. He would have to be. If he's the son of God, he would have to be God. One of the same, same Good. entities. One of the same thing. Right. And doesn't his resurrection from the dead point to him being God? Not necessarily. I, I think that if everything in the Bible is, is correct, then I think that without a doubt, yeah, he would be one with God at that point. Okay. It's like water, you know, steam. So do you think the historical evidence point to Christ having risen from the dead? I think there's definitely historical evidence in the area. But like I'm saying, I, I believe that the Bible is written by man. I think that man is at fault. So I don't think that taking everything in the Bible as absolute truth is is necessarily what a God that would give us free will would want us necessarily to do. Okay, so what test do you use to determine what parts of the Bible are accurate and what parts are inaccurate? No, I don't I don't put it to a test at all. I, I, I tell you, if it was gonna be put to a test, I think it'd be my own my own uh, you know, gut moral instinct. And if I am taking the test of my own gut moral instinct, and God has created me, then I guess I'm doing something right. Good, so you're on the right path. But I think that we can get downright brilliant when it comes to rationalizing whatever we want to do. So I think it's pretty healthy if God has given us a plumb line that we can measure our consciences, our gut, with. Like the Ten Commandments. Like the Sermon on the Mount. And if you really are wanting to know truth, and if you really believe that God exists, it's well worth our time to search after him. You know, Jesus said, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And him who knocks, the door shall be opened. If you spend four years here at this fine university, preparing for at most a 60 year career, don't you think it'd be wise to study a bit in preparation for eternity? I have a question for you. If, uh, what do you believe of people who believe in other religions? Do you think when they die, how do you think they will be judged? I have to divide that question into two parts. What about those who've heard about Christ? What about those who've not heard about Christ? Oh, sure. Jesus never answers the question, how is God going to judge those who've never heard about Christ? So I don't know. But Jesus and the Bible make five points that apply to that issue. God is just, nobody's getting ripped off. The only reason people go to hell is because they choose to live their life separate from God and on the day of judgment, God grants their request. Thirdly, they're gonna be a truckload of people in heaven who never heard the word Jesus. Hebrews chapter 11 lists some of these people by name. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Rahab, a Gentile prostitute. Never heard the word Jesus, but in humility, they put their faith in God. Fourthly, the only reason those folks will be in heaven the only reason any of us will be in heaven, Christ claimed, is because he bled and died on a cross to pay the penalty for our wrongdoing. And fifthly, although I do not know specifically how God will judge those who have never heard about Christ, I do know that all of us here have more than ample opportunity to read the Gospels, to decide what are we going to do with Christ. In the Quran, we read, 
Jesus is a good prophet. He is not God. The problem is the historical Jesus claimed to be God. It's said to be an internal contradiction is on one page it says something, on a different page it says something else. Like the gentleman that left mentioned about the creation. You're how right. Creation came the about. Quran does not contradict Baptist. itself. I agree. So but we'll it contradicts point point the two. historical evidence that Jesus claimed to be God. Claim. Claim. From what John and Joseph and Mike and Ma that's whoever right, man. And that's the only thing. I, that's the only way I can know anything historically. History, historical knowledge is based on the trustworthiness of eyewitness testimony. So then, why take what John and those people said 500 years before what Muhammad came with? Yeah, that's exactly why I trust John, because he lived with Jesus. <laughs> Muhammad was the dude who never met Jesus. John come, met Jesus, listen to Jesus. But doesn't it come with time that things like that become more inaccurate? Jesus' book isn't here. Jesus' book is not here. Yes, the Gospels the of Matthew, way. Mark, Luke, and John the were same. written in the first century. Okay, Moses' book, Eyewitnesses, the that's what I want when it comes to Moses historical book, knowledge. the Torah, right? Did Jesus believe in the Torah? Did Jesus follow Moses? Yes, Jesus and, believed the Torah was the word of God, very so clearly. So then why, why do you accept Jesus as a successor of Moses and you don't accept Muhammad as a successor of Jesus? Because Muhammad contradicted Jesus. But you don't have any way to tell whether or not what Jesus came with is the exact same as what Moses came with because the book Moses came with is not the same today as it was at the time. Can you agree with me on that? No, that made no sense yes, to me. I'm sorry, I'm not did. smart enough to figure of out what you just said did. there. Makes no sense to me. Okay, what on earth did right you just now, say? Right now, the book that Moses came with. Yes. Do you agree, Jesus? He didn't memorized. come with anything. He wrote something. He didn't write anything. It was revealed to him. A baloney. Moses was wrote. To him. No, no book floated out of so heaven to Moses. What makes him a prophet? Moses wrote. What makes him a prophet? The fact that he he was a self-claimed prophet. He he was a good writer. There's plenty of good writers. That doesn't make them prophets. Goodness gracious, man! No way. What, what well, is I your accept definition this of a kind of, of, of floating out of heaven what? book that you do. No one's saying it's floating out of heaven. I well, then what are you saying? Well, through angels. Do you believe Moses angels? wrote. No, an angel didn't write the Torah. No one said Moses an angel wrote it. Moses wrote it. He no wrote it. Not an angel. An angel wrote it. No and no one... angel wrote the New Testament either. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Peter, James wrote the New Testament. So what makes someone a prophet and not a random great writer? What makes someone a prophet is that God inspires them. And there's absolutely no way that I can show you who a prophet is. If this guy claims to be a prophet, I can't just blindly say, yes, he's a prophet, or no, he's not a prophet. I have to observe how he lives his life. I have to listen to what he believes. And 500 people for you is good enough for that. As long as 500 people say he's a prophet, we're good. We're golden. No, that's your <laughs> argument. I'm not standing that's here like saying anybody's before. a prophet. Your argument is... Follow me to Scientology! <laughs> so again, we'll, we'll talk about what makes someone a prophet. Your definition of a prophet, and I'll follow with mine. You said a good writer. No, I didn't. But again, so, so we're all on the same page. someone who's inspired by God, but I can't show you that someone's inspired by God. It's impossible. So this is something in your own heart. I can't show you that a book is inspired by God. And don't you understand? That's why it's so, so hard for you and me to have oh, an intelligent conversation. Okay. Because you just lapsed into, can I answer your, this can is I inspired answer your, by God, can I this is from name? God, this is from an angel. Well, well, well fine, but there's no way you can show that. Okay, are you, you're here right now. The purpose of you coming here is to, quote unquote, guide misguided people. I talked to the people who brought you, and they said, your point is not to convert people to Christianity. Your point is to get atheists and agnostics to believe in Jesus. No, yeah. and you, I pray well, you'll come to believe well, in Jesus, man. I believe in Jesus. I, I don't no, you believe reject in Jesus him as God. You, do. you don't I, accept his death on I the cross in for your sin. Okay, but we'll stop, we'll, we'll go here. You're here to take people to believe in Jesus. But you just said right now that you can't explain to someone that a book is inspired by God or someone else is inspired by God. So why are you here? There is absolutely no way that any human being can prove that any book has been inspired by God. Then why are you here to tell us to believe in the Bible? Because I am convinced that to believe in God and to believe in Jesus does not mean you have to first believe 
that a book is inspired by God. So I'm supposed you to take you as the You cannot blindly believe anything in life. Jesus? And to blindly believe that the Quran or the Bible or any book has been inspired by God is such a leap of faith. I, I'm not asking anybody to do that. Okay, so can we have the second part of our deal that I'd explain to you what a prophet is? Sure. A prophet is someone who comes with something extraordinary that combats everything at the time in proof of his claim. So many people came claiming they were prophets and they did things that didn't prove their claim. The prophet came, Prophet Muhammad, first of all, we'll start off with Jesus, who we both agree with. Jesus was born without a father. How right? do you know that? Miracle number one. How do you know that? Revealed in the Quran and when he spoke. Revealed in the Quran, no, no. 500 years Listen, after the fact, spoke, all of a sudden, because some dude says he was born without okay, a father, you believe okay, it? Okay, fine. You don't believe that Jesus was born without a father. You don't I can promise you, ma'am, I'm not going to believe Jesus was born without a father because some dude who lived 500 years after Christ okay. writes it in a book. Okay, so then we'll stop right there. Forget everything about Muhammad. Do Christians believe that Jesus was born without a father? Yeah, but not because some dude 500 years after so the then, fact wrote it, that's so, for sure. But then how do, how do, what do they take as their belief for Jesus being born without a father? Because eyewitnesses who knew Jesus' mother, a woman named Mary, talked with her. They talked with Joseph. And they found out that indeed Mary was a virgin when Jesus was born. So then we take it's not something they made up 500 years okay. later. Okay, so then it's something we, that they found from eyewitness talking. So do we take that? We take Jesus being born without a father as a miracle. That's proof yes. he's a prophet. That's proof he's a prophet, correct? No. Why? Just why? because a miracle happens doesn't mean the dude's a prophet. Why? He could be a false prophet. So then why, why Miracles don't you, happen to why false prophets. Why doesn't your prophets. mom have a son without a father? What miracles happen to false prophets? We'll go over that right now. What miracles happen, happen to false prophets? Man, if you get in the occult, you can go to seances, and demonic powers are shown. Supernatural powers are shown. You can, you can go a lot of places on this planet. But how are they shown? Magic. How are they shown? How are they shown? Yeah, how are they shown? Like, All right, I'll tell you Factually, how. factually. You how bet. can you show it in substance? You bet. No, no, answer. No, I went to a Not prep just, school. No, 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 answer. I am answering you. I went Where to a prep school actually, here in Connecticut, and I had a philosophy professor who went to a seance. And at the seance, the medium told him things about his past that it took him two weeks to remember had even occurred. This philosophy professor came And psychologists have done that too with sexual abuse cases where they convince their clients of a history that never happened. So how do you know that's not the case? How can you prove that it's true? Well, you gotta use your brain to figure out what Okay, so then, then that means that, that's on the premise that you're using your brain. Yeah, that is on a premise, okay. that's right. Okay. Why are you wasting your time listening to a guy who's just gibbering? You're in our way. I'm sorry, I didn't question. realize that your no. ankle had a chain tied I'll, to the brick underneath I'll answer there. That question. I was under the impression that you chose to be here freely. He did choose to be Let here. Let me relieve you if oh. you're being forced Please. to be here. Oh, I'm, I'm not. I'm enjoying All your right. company. But listen, <laughs> I'm Thank you. Here.